research team to pull up the hundreds of mainstream media admitted cases where Satanists are sacrificing children. And then it's never even a big news story. You'd think that'd be a big news story. That's sensational, but they keep it quiet. Or when they find a castle full of women tortured to death in France, that happens all the time. It's a minor footnote or Tony Blair is going to satanic rituals or Francois Mineron was an admitted Luciferian. I mean, we're run by devil worshipers. And then it all makes sense. You're like, wow. No wonder this is so bad. No wonder this is so crazy. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I'm sure you've seen the cases now where they're busting abortuaries where it turns out they're doing stuff with the kids' bodies too. Well, I mean, no kidding. Who wants to Who wants to take that job and who wants to do partial birth abortions, folks? Who wants to kill nine-month-old babies? I mean, you got to be a sicko, a sicko. Uh, Fritz Springmeyer, comments on that. Yeah, I, I'm just listening and, and uh, tracking what you're saying and agreeing. To, to finish my thought, I was talking about a man who, using telephoto lens, had photographed one of these uh, sacrificial rituals. And, um, you know, a ritual is a murder. It's a crime. So he turned these over to the local police. And the next thing that happened was, was the Kansas Bureau of Investigation came down, snatched up all the photographs, and they disappeared. Um, another man ha was uh, monitoring uh, from a distance a ritual. And guess who was doing the patrolling and the protection and the guarding of the ritual? It was the county sheriff department. So, the you know, the wolf is guarding the chicken coop. And, uh, and, and, and then they tell us that these things don't happen. And, and yet, like you say, they're, they're happening all around us, and, and yet we're, we're not being uh, allowed to realize uh, the intensity of it all. All I know is I see people out in some field getting ready to butcher a little kid. It's going to be uh, 50 cal or Lapua time. And I guess I'm a criminal, though, if I would shoot Satan worshippers trying to kill a child. See, in the new America, we're the bad guys. Yeah. I mean, it's their uh, right to religion to grab a kid off the street or out of a house and kill them. I mean, we're we're bad people, Fritz, that, that, that we would not want to do that. Yeah, things have been uh, right is wrong and wrong is right. Things have been st stood on their head. But uh, the, uh, that shouldn't shouldn't keep us from doing what's right. And and if we sh one should continue to. Uh, to to think on good things and and uh, focus on on good examples and be the type of person that that uh, God would want us to be. Um, Fred Springmeyer, I agree with you completely. Uh, we don't have time to get to other callers, but I will get to the other calls coming up. But I want to get you back on again to specifically get into the Satanism angle because all of this is a sacrifice. It's a, even if they're not consciously into the occult, these CPS people drugging the little kids till they die. They enjoy it. They laugh about it. It's all about scum having power. And, and that's what evil is. It's big groups of weak people getting together to oppress the strong and the weak uh, individually. And it's just people that never get sick of pressing on the nerve of power. It's just all about the raw exercise of power. And there's never enough, never enough. And I'm sick of them waging war against innocence creativity and everything that's good and i pledge and swear on the altar of god eternal resistance against every form of tyranny over the mind of humankind and everyone that attacks innocence because my only desire is to see them strung up by their necks until dead bloodlines the illuminati available at infowars.com get it and find out how deep the rabbit hole goes sick of the globalist eugenicist control Lennon LaRouche joins us for the next 30 minutes. Then we're going to have Luke Radowski join us from Chicago, where the uh, international media and even the U.S. media calls it a police state. Welcome, NATO, to Chicago's police state. And they are locking the city down, uh, taking people to jail for beer-making equipment they bought at the grocery store. Uh, it is just a very frightening manifestation. The new Defense Authorization Act reaffirms secret arrest and disappearance of the American people and will repeal, if it finally passes, a 1948 law, the Foreign Relations Authorization Act, 
updated in 87 that it's illegal for psyops to be conducted in the U.S. with government misinformation campaigns. Oh, they lie professionally. Uh, so now they're just uh, going to make legal what's already been going on. $642 billion for indefinite detention and psyop operations against us, the people that pay their salaries. And again, no one's more brainwashed than the average troops themselves. They're not bad people. In fact, they're starting to wake up. Uh, but we're not in Kansas anymore. Now, Lennon LaRouche joins us to talk about a host of issues. Uh, we have Medvedev, the uh, he rotated from president to prime minister over in Russia saying they may have to have nuclear war with the U.S. The Chinese president said that three months ago, prepare for war. Uh, we've got the West shifting now saying Al-Qaeda is our friend, attacking Syria and Libya. The new terrorist threat is the American people. Uh, and the new military threat is China. And then we have Obama's literary agent for 16 years saying he was born in Kenya. Obviously, Obama is being blackmailed with that info. Lyndon LaRouche, uh, who has an incredible private intelligence network, doesn't need any introduction here uh, from uh, my show. We'll give you his websites as well. Uh, Lyndon LaRouche here on the show with us. Uh, Lyndon, so much is happening in the world right now. The impeachment starting to move forward. Out of that spectrum of issues I threw out at you, what would you like to uh, tackle first? Well, the point is we're in an interim period of probably, I don't know how many days or weeks, a transition after which I would expect a decision be made on whether the president, or the current president, is going to continue to be president. Uh, we're in a crisis. I wouldn't be surprised if you have... Uh, a new president being listed to the roster in terms of the failures of this. But we're in the greatest crisis that of our nation has ever existed, even since the Revolutionary War. And the question is whether we'll survive. I, I am, of course, committed to doing what is necessary to make this nation survive successfully. But uh, we're in a, for the next weeks, we are in a very dangerous situation in which no one can certainly tell you what's going to happen. It may be people can tell you what they should should happen, but they're not able to tell you, not even me. <laughs> you were going. on a month or so ago and you said the crisis was going to get worse. It has. We've got the financial meltdowns taking place, the zombie banks. Why is the world accelerating towards conflict and crisis? Uh, what has put us on this path? Well, first of all, we put on this path by a bunch of presidents we had as a sequence of presidents so far, including this one. And the only likelihood that we'll get, avoid the very worst effect of some kind or another if we don't get this president out of office very soon. Look, you've got a Republican candidate who doesn't wash, and you've got a, a, a present president who also is a failure. I think we're going to come to a point of decision, and it's going to come over the issue of the relationship of Russia to the United States. That's where the issue lies. If Obama gets out. Now, the thing we have to understand is the Joint Chiefs of Staff and related military concern people have prevented this from becoming a really a thermonuclear war so far. They're, but as long as we have Obama as president, as long as he remains in the office of president, we cannot be secure. We may get into a thermonuclear war, a full-scale thermonuclear war. It will be started by the United States if Obama is president. So getting Obama out of the presidency now is not an also-ran. It is something that must happen if we're going to have a United States. I'm optimistic that if there are things I won't say now because that's a little bit inappropriate. But I think that if Obama is removed from office which he's ripe to do soon, we will get a completely new shuffle. And I think out of a new shuffle, we have a chance of coming out of this ahead. Now, Carol Quigley's book that came out in the late 60s as an insider, uh, which they wanted to then remove off the shelves, Tragedy and Hope, that I should add is available at Infowars.com. It basically validates everything you've said about this being a uh, Britannic-centered conspiracy, at least the British system of divide and conquer, divide and rule. Now we learn that, I mean, there's just evidence upon evidence that Obama really is born in Kenya. That would have made him a British subject. 
a British citizen. I've been trying to really track who he is with all these fake names. From your research, because I know you've been saying this, is that why you've been saying Obama is a British agent? I know he's a British agent because he's an agent of British interest. I don't care where he was born. He's a British agent. He's following orders from London, the British Empire. And that's the issue. He also is unfit to be president, mentally, morally, otherwise. So therefore, he should be impeached or thrown out of office, whatever. We get him out of office within a few weeks from now, at least. Well, you've been we saying that for a while, and I, I, I kind of saw it as wishful thinking, but so I had Jerome Corsi on. He said the word is Obama's in trouble. Uh, I had even uh, one of your old colleagues, Webster Tarpley, on saying something similar. We've seen all these Washington Post articles about Obama should step down. There should be a new nominee. Do you think they'll really try something like that? Well, I think the only way it's going to happen is if the uh, somebody in the United States. Look, go back to the time that the uh, what happened in, in uh, Libya uh, and, and things like that. This th this thing was supposed to go to a full scale war sometime late last uh, the late last, last months, uh, uh, and it didn't happen. Uh, it didn't happen because of uh, certain certain influences. Uh, but mo mostly it didn't happen because our military leadership and people associated with that leadership have acted to prevent the United States from being engaged in a thermonuclear war uh, with Russia. Uh, Russia doesn't want it. Russia is willing to cooperate with the United States on exactly the terms the United States wants, that not Obama. So we can avoid this war. And if we get rid of Obama, we're going to have to take a new president. We don't have one running. Maybe Hillary Clinton would come forward and volunteer again or something. What but, does getting rid of Obama do? Send a signal of a change? No, if we, it actually frees the American people from a dictatorship. People out there are scared. There is an increasing hatred of Obama. There's opposition to Obama increasing. But people are frightened. If they see him going, they are going to suddenly become encouraged. And I think we'll get a presidency that we want if that happens. Why are they announcing and admitting that they do have re-education camps for political dissidents? Uh, yourself, a former political prisoner of this system. Why are they announcing that, yeah, they're listening to us? It looks like they're trying to intimidate us. Well, look at Kassinstein, huh? He's the associate specialist in dictatorship inside the Obama administration. And if Obama goes, he goes, the program goes. The American people are fed up with this thing, but they're frightened. They're becoming a little less frightened because they're becoming more angry than they are frightened. But I think we're going to reach a point where either we actually go to a thermonuclear war, and that's something we will not survive. No one could survive. And by the no way, you were saying that here six months ago. Now the Chinese president, the Russian president, and prime minister are all saying thermal nuclear conflagration, using your exact quote, uh, is now on the table. Why are they saying things like that? Because it's true. We have, we have the negotiations going on. For example, Russia has a whole panoply of these negotiations. The Joint Chiefs of Staff have laid out the policy for the United States in terms of a non-war. A non uh, these are the important things. We have people in the United States, especially in our professional military and some other people of that type, who have been opposing Obama all the way through. But as long as Obama has the title of President of the United States, their hands are tied if Obama really tries to pull something off. And he's got the British behind him. So therefore, we're holding off, hoping that Obama does not get the chance to declare thermonuclear war globally. And he's getting ready to do so. And the whole Anglo-American arm, they think they're going to be able to fix things by having a nuclear war with Russia? No, they're insane. 